Hey, fellow scientists! I am so glad you could join me on my camping trip. We were just about to make some s'mores at... Yeah, there, uh, there may be some other animals out there, but I'm not worried. My friend told me that humans are at the top of the food chain, so there's nothing to worry about. Wait, you're saying that's not how it works. Oh. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. No, no, I'm not scared. This is my curious face. I'm wondering, what exactly is a food chain? And how does it work? Maybe the answer is in my tent. By the end of today's lesson, you'll be able to explain how a food chain represents the flow of energy in an ecosystem. Let's get into it. Whether surviving a night in the wilderness or just day-to-day -day life, all living things need energy to survive. How that energy moves through an ecosystem can be represented with a food chain. A food chain is a model that shows how energy flows between living things. In most ecosystems, the flow of all that energy starts with the sun. Energy from the sun enters an ecosystem through organisms like plants that can transform the sun's light energy into chemical energy. Do you remember what organisms that make food from the sun's light energy are called? Right, producers. Producers are always at the start of a food chain, and they continually replenish the ecosystem with energy through photosynthesis. The energy created by producers moves through the ecosystem when plants are eaten by consumers. For example, grass produces energy through photosynthesis. When a grasshopper comes along and eats the grass, the energy from the grass passes to the grasshopper. The consumers that get energy by eating producers are called primary consumers. Primary means first, so these are just the first of many consumers creating the flow of energy through a food chain. The chain doesn't stop with primary consumers, though. Imagine a mouse scurries by and decides the grasshopper looks like a tasty meal. When it eats the grasshopper, the energy is passed to the mouse. Energy has flowed from the sun to the grass, to the grasshopper, and now to the mouse. We call that mouse a secondary consumer. Secondary consumers get energy by eating primary consumers. What if a hawk swoops by and eats the mouse? The hawk is a tertiary consumer, which describes the animals that can eat secondary or primary consumers. Unlike those consumers, tertiary consumers have no natural predators of their own. That means that within their ecosystems, no one gets their energy by eating tertiary consumers. The hawk, in this case, is at the top of the food chain. And there we have it. A food chain. Energy flows from the sun and through the ecosystem, ending with a tertiary consumer. And notice the way the arrows are pointing, showing us the direction the energy is flowing. Food chains always contain a producer to transform the sun's energy and at least one of each type of consumer. Primary, secondary, and tertiary. Take a moment to pause the video here and label each type of consumer on the food chain in your guide and notes. So, a food chain is a model showing us one way energy flows through an ecosystem. Let's create a food chain from this marine ecosystem. Like with our last food chain, the energy in this ecosystem begins with the sun. Phytoplankton, a type of microscopic algae, are the producers in this ecosystem. They harness energy from the sun and turn it into chemical energy through photosynthesis. So, Let's add an arrow pointing from the sun to the phytoplankton to show the flow of energy. Small fish, such as the clownfish, eat the phytoplankton. The phytoplankton's energy passes to the clownfish, making them a primary consumer. Larger fish, such as the eel, then eat the clownfish. 
Let's add an arrow showing that transfer of energy. What type of consumer does that make the eel? Right, the eel is a secondary consumer because it eats the clownfish, a primary consumer. The eel might then be eaten by a shark. There's nothing in this ecosystem that'll try to eat a shark, so the shark is at the top of this food chain. That makes it a tertiary consumer. And we've made a food chain. This model makes it simple to see how energy flows from the sun to the living things in an ecosystem. Let's review everything we've learned today. A food chain is a model that shows how energy is transferred through an ecosystem. Food chains begin with an energy source, like the sun, the energy from which is transformed by producers. As we move up the food chain, we have primary consumers, which eat producers, secondary consumers, which eat primary consumers, and tertiary consumers, which can eat secondary and primary consumers. The arrows of a food chain show the direction of the flow of energy. To learn more about food chains, be sure to check out the practice questions and activities that go with this lesson. Humans are tertiary consumers, so no other consumers rely on us as a source of energy, but out here in the woods, I am not in my normal ecosystem, so it is important for me to take precautions to stay safe. Maybe I'll get a hotel room for my next vacation. Thanks for joining me today, and remember, science is all around us. See you next time. <laughs>